How Tinubu nominated Osibanjo. The news media have become agog with false story as to how Vice President Yemi Osibanjo came to be. During the launch of a book, Muhammad Buhari, The Challenges of Leadership in Nigeria, a biography on President Muhammad Buhari in Abuja on Monday, 3rd of October 2016. Nigerians were fed with half truth by the author, Professor John Pardin, on how Sibanjo became the vice president of the country. I don't know how the author came about his story, but he totally got it wrong because what he wrote basically is based on falsehood that reeks of deliberate misinformation and mischief. I know how Asiwaju Bola Tinubu picked Vice President Yemi Osibanjo because I was part of the process that midwifed his nomination. In mid-December 2014, it was a Saturday morning after President Muhammad Buhari had been picked by the All Progressive Congress APC at the party's presidential primaries at Telsim Balogu Stadium in Surulere, Lagos. I received a phone call from Asiwaju to see him that morning. On my way to his house, I discovered that a car at a reasonable distance was that of former Lagos State Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Dele Alake, who was ostensibly heading towards Asewaju's house in Ikoi. Asewaju must have called him to for that tax and could be explained underneath. As soon as we arrived, Asewaju quickly asked us to join him in his car as we headed to a guest house. At the guest house, the former All Progressive Congress APC Chairman Chief B.C. Akande, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, and one renowned pastor joined us. At the meeting, Asawaju related to us the urgent need to pick a vice presidential candidate for the APC. He advised that we immediately discard the idea of his being nominated for the vice presidential slot as it was no longer possible to pick a Muslim Muslim ticket. This, he reasoned, made sense if indeed we were to be realistic in our bid to defeat president good luck jonathan in the 2015 election he reasoned that what was important and imperative at that time was to look for a good christian nominee to complement president muhammad buhari i remember baba akande responded to his aversion that he would still have preferred that asiwaju should be the running mate since it had been done before Baba Kande was obviously referring to the MKO Abiola Babagana Kingebe nomination. Asiwaju responded by distinguishing the political equation then from what was before us at that point in time. He foreclosed that scenario as no longer possible. We all voiced our opinions and at the end of the day, it was resolved that we had to get a Christian candidate. It was at this point that Asiwaju reminded us to be fast in coming up with an option because he felt other geopolitical zones are also jostling for some positions reiterating the need for the southwest to get it as a must as wajun audacity told us for that left to him and if he were to pick anyone he would suggest professor yemi osibanjo that osibanjo apart from being a brilliant legal luminary is also a committed progressive and democrat and having been married to the late Obafemi Awolowo's granddaughter, it will not be a problem selling him to the old political establishment of Southwest for acceptance. He asserted that Alake and I, having served in his cabinet, could attest to the great works he did as Attorney General during his Asiwaju's administration as Governor of Lagos State. He also reasoned that the second major factor in favor of Osibanjo was the fact that he is a strong Christian and one that he's already a pastor at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG. In the long run, Osibanjo's nomination was well received by all of us at that meeting, and Professor Osibanjo was asked to start detailing with us further strategy sections to which he brought up his laptop, and we all commenced the brainstorming session. The rest of the discussion was to strategize on how to contain other likely opponent from the southwest zone before proceeding to Abuja to battle other regional zones in the coming nomination. The meeting did not finish until about 9 p.m. when we returned to Asiwaju's residence in Bolidium. By the time we returned to his house, 
There were about six, seven governors already waiting to see him from different parts of Nigeria. What is particularly sad now is that the book launch of the president was deployed to create a make-believe story that puts the society at the disadvantage of history. One would have thought that now that the progressive through an uncommon alliance in 2015 created an upset by defeating for the first time in the country's history, the then ruling People's Democratic Party PDP, it might be taken as given that the role of all active participants in the exercise will be correctly recorded, but surprisingly and painfully too, such an avenue was used to create a historical distortion of facts. If a political adversary had done that, one would not have been disturbed. This is because at the end of the day, under such circumstance, the goal is usually to create a make-believe story that puts the society on the wrong side of history. But now that the progressives, through an uncommon alliance in 2015, created an upset by defeating for the first time in the country's history, the then ruling PDP, it might be taken as given that the role of the active participants in the exercise will be correctly recorded. But surprisingly, painfully, is the fact that a historical distortion of fact is coming from an unexpected quarter at this early stage of progressive politics. It becomes more of a matter of concern when a renowned intellectual writes a book and begins to redefine events in his own way by evading facts that are belowing in the public space in order to recreate a world of make-believe for his audience. Sincerely, such an act understandably becomes a matter of a matter to ponder seriously. Let us stop here. It is not all clothes that can be dried in the sun. This article was written by Tun Tunji Bello and first published October 7, 2016 and has been reproduced because of the issue at the moment. A while ago, um, it was yesterday, uh, when the news broke out that um, um, how Usibanjo was uh, appointed, one of Buhari's aides, Baba Femi Ojudu, he stated that he was the one personally that suggested Usibanjo to Tinubu that he nominated. He was the one. Ever since Yemi Usibanjo declared his intentions to run for presidency, a lot has been coming out. You know, it was because of that that this report that was uh, first published in 2016 has come up again with the true uh, detail of how Sibanjo emerged as VP, as Vice President. Let's hear your thoughts. Thank you once again for staying tuned. Please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Till I come your way again with more updates. Bye.